Hello guys, welcome back to another video of uh, discussion in integration. And in this video, we will continue our discussion on the integration of trigonometric function. But it is um, very different from the previous video that I made. Now, since in this video, we will adapt power rule in integrating trigonometric function. As what you can remember, we have different type of integration rule for trigonometric function. So one of this rule is integration of sine u du that equals to negative cosine u plus c. We also have integration of cosine u du that is sine u plus c. Correct? But in this video, instead of using this one, we will use the power rule that is the integration of u raised to r du is equal to um, u raised to r plus 1 over r plus 1. Let's try to solve example. We have example number 1 here that is the integration of sine squared x cosine x dx. Now in this case, we have two different trigonometric identity. We have sine and cosine. So again, in order to adapt the integration rule of power formula that is u r du, we need to come up with a u and the r and the derivative of the u. Now in this case, we have two possible u, but it is safe to say since we have an exponent, okay, this exponent here, this could be our r. So Therefore, our r here that, equal, that is equals to 2. Now, since that is our r, then we can say that our u is equal to sine x. Then we know that the derivative of sine x from your differential calculus that is derivative of sine x that is called sine x dx. Correct? So, we can rewrite, actually we can rewrite the function as the integration of sine x, then we have squared, then cosine x dx. So in this case, this one is our u, this two here that is our r, and this one is our du. So therefore, upon checking the function or the integrand, we have u raised to r du, which satisfies the function u raised to r du. Hence, we can now use the power rule u r plus 1 over r plus 1 plus c. Okay, so let's now substitute u, r, and du in this um, power rule. So therefore, our u, that is sine x raised to our r here, that is 2, 2 plus 1, over r plus 1, that is 2 plus 1 plus c. Or simply, by further simplifying the equation, then we can say that it is sine x raised to 3 over 3 plus c. We can now, um, we can actually put 3 or cube above the sine. So we can um, re rewrite the function as sine cube x over 3 plus c. So this is now your um, integration or your final answer and the integration of sine squared x cosine x dx. Now we have example number two that is the integration of cosine x over sine for x dx. Now take note we have denominator sine for x and we can um, move the denominator to the numerator by changing the exponent. So we can rewrite the function as the integration of sine x raised to negative 4 cosine x dx. So we have to identify u, r, and du in this case. And we know that our u here is sine x, it is our u, and negative 4 here that is our r. So we have u that is sine x du the derivative of sine that is cosine x dx and our r in this case negative 4 
So, upon checking the integrand, our du, which is cosine x dx, has already been um, satisfied by our function. So, this is now our du. Otherwise, we need to come up with a multiplier. Okay, if hindi na satisfy ng du ang ating integrand, then we need to come up a multiplier inside and the reciprocal of that multiplier outside of the integration. So, that's the rule. Don't uh, forget that rule in integration. So, therefore, since we have u r du, so that's the same with the power rule, that is again, u r du, that is u r plus 1 over r plus 1 plus c. Then we have our answer, our u that is sine x, correct? Then we have r plus 1, that is negative 4 plus 1 over negative 4 plus 1 plus c. Further simplifying the function leads us to sine x raised to negative 3 over negative 3 plus c. Then move um, sine x negative 3 to the denominator. Then the exponent or the sign of the exponent will change into positive. So we have the final answer is negative 1 over 3 sine cube x plus c. So this is now our final answer and the integration of cosine x over sine fourth x dx. Then we have example number 3. We have the integration of sine v over 3 then cosine v over 3 dv. Okay, so in this case, we have two different um, answer. We can set u here in terms of sine, or we can set right, sine v3, or we can set other u here that is called sine v over 3. So it's up to you on which um, track you're going to do. But in this case, I'd like to set u here as sine v over 3 okay so therefore our du in that case is equal to so what is the derivative of a sine v over 3 that is um, one third correct cosine v over 3 then dv if you remember your differential calculus okay now our r here so since we don't have exponent in our um, trigonometric function sign then we obviously it has a it has a one or trace to the first degree so that is our r here is one okay so we can apply now the integration of u r du that is equal to u is to r plus one over r plus one now in this case our u is okay we rewrite the equation v3 cos v3 dv. Now, in this case, our u is this one. Our r, since obviously it is to 1, then our dv is this one, or our du, sorry. However, since the required du here is 1 third cosine v3 dv, then we need to have, since it, la it is lacking of one third in the equation, then we have we introduce a multiplier, one third, correct? And outside of the integration, we multiply reciprocal of one third, that is three, correct? So therefore, our integration is, um, you write three, then we have u r plus one over r plus one, that is, since our u is sine v3, Okay, raised to r plus 1, that is 1 plus 1, since our r is 1, over 1 plus 1 plus c. Then our answer here, that is 3 over 2 sine squared um, v over 3 plus c. So this is now your final answer of the integration of sine v over 3 cosine v over 3. Now, again, you can use u here as our cosine v over 3, then your du is negative sine v over 3. But the answer here is different. So the answer would be negative 
3 over 2 cosine squared v over 3 plus c. So, so I'll leave this to you. Now you, you try to solve um, the integration using your using u as cosine v over 3. So the answer should be this one. Okay, we have um, example number 4 that is the integration of second raised to the 5x then tangent x dx. Now, you might think that our u in this type of problem is second x since it has an exponent 5. Now, if you try to use u here as second x and r is 5, then our du, if you indifferentiate second x, that would give us from your differential calculus that is second x tangent x dx. So this is now your u. And this one now is your r. But look at the equation. We have tangent x dx as our du in this case. So we are lacking of a second x in the equation. However, we cannot multiply second x in the integrand. We, um, you have to remember that we cannot use variable or we cannot use a function that contains variable as a multiplier. Ang pwede lang natin gamitin as a multiplier inside the integrand is a constant. Okay? So, we cannot use second x here, then multiply 1 over second x at that point just to satisfy the du, the required du. No. Okay? So, it should not be done. Okay? So, the best way here to compute for the integration is to divide second 5x into two terms. Okay, so we can rewrite our um, function as second 4x, then second x tangent x dx. If we combine these two, if you combine second 4x and second x, that would give us second 5x, diba? Since you ha just have to add the exponent of the two variables. So let's now solve it by using the power formula. So let this one here as our u and this one as our r. Then, all this identity as our du. Let's try to check. So, if our u is second x, our r is 4, then we have the derivative of u that is second x tangent x dx, which give us, or which have already satisfied by the integrand. Okay? So, second x tangent x dx, that is the required du by differentiating second x. So therefore, we have satisfied the power formula that's u, r, du. Okay, we have u, r, and du. So therefore, we can use u raised to r plus 1 over r plus 1. Then in that case, our u is second x raised to our r, that is 4 plus 1, all over 4 plus 1 plus c. Again, our, since our u here, that is second x. So therefore, we have second x raised to 5 over 5 plus c. Or that would give us 1 fifth second fifth x plus c. So this is now our final answer or the integration of second 5x tangent x dx. Now, now, we have last example. We have example number 5. That is the integration of cos second squared x, then square root of 1 plus 3 cotangent x dx. So, in order for us to easily understand the problem, we have to rewrite it into exponential form. And that is the integration of cos second squared x times 1 plus 3 cotangent x dx raised to 1 half dx. And then in this case, we have two possible candidate of u. We can use this as our u, and, or we can use cosine x as our u, and 2 as our r, or 1 half as our r. But take note, in, in differential calculus, we know that if we differentiate cotangent x dx that would give us a value of negative cosecant squared x correct so therefore we can use this base here as our u okay, let's try 
we have here our u that is um, 1 plus 3 cotangent x and our du so if you differentiate 1 plus 3 cotangent x so 1 becomes 0 since it is constant then the remaining would be negative 3 cos second squared x dx so this would be our different um, this would be our derivatives of 1 plus 3 cotangent x now if you want to rewrite this one into a much um, simpler form we can see that it is 1 plus 3 cotangent x raised to 1 half cosecant squared x dx I just move cosecant squared x beside dx so therefore this is now our u and this one is our r and this one should be our du but take note the required du comes with a negative 3 coefficient but take note in the integrand we don't have negative 3 so we introduce again a multiplier that is negative 3 and the outside which is the reciprocal of negative 3 that is 1 over negative 3 correct so we have now satisfied u raised to r du this entire term now is our d okay so again we use the power rule that is u raised to r plus 1 over r plus 1 in which our u here that is 1 plus 3 cotangent x correct but since that is our u however we have a coefficient that is negative 1 over 3 so we include that in our function that is negative 1 over 3 then our u that is 1 plus 3 cotangent x that is 1 plus 3 cotangent x raised to our r that is 1 half is 1 our r we have 1 half plus 1 over 1 half plus 1 but don't forget the arbitrary constant c then by using algebra we can simplify it further into negative one third 1 plus 3 cotangent x so if we add 1 half plus 1 then we come up with um, 3 halves and the denominator since we also have 1 half plus 1 here then we have 3 halves plus c now we can actually si further um, simplify it further by getting the reciprocal of 3 halves and multiply it to 1 third and then we have negative 1 third times 2 third correct then times 1 plus 3 cotangent x raised to 3 halves plus c. So our final answer in this case is negative 2 over 9, 1 plus 3 cotangent x raised to 3 halves plus c. So this is now our final answer or this is the integration of this one cos second squared x square root of 1 plus 3 cotangent x dx that's it for integrating of trigonometric functions so i hope that um, it makes clear for more videos don't forget to like and subscribe thank you very much for listening